Gather, grow, give, go. Gather, grow, give, go. Gather, grow, give, go. Gather, grow, give, go. We are kingdom fellowship. We're kingdom focused. We gather to work.
Stand to our fiddle over the house. Can you just sing Jesus, Jesus? There's something about that name. Jesus. God bless you and welcome back. We're so excited to have you joining us again for Bible study. Listen, you are in the right place at the right time doing absolutely the right thing. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. You've joined us for Bible study, which means you've joined us to get deeper into God's word, to go further into God's word and to really edify yourself. And listen, one of the best ways to do that is not just to learn for yourself, but to share with others. So right now, here's a wonderful time to be a digital evangelist. Take a moment right now send somebody a text paste your paste the link that you're watching on your social media you know share with somebody we want folk to know that the word of God is going forth right here at Kingdom Fellowship listen we're so glad that you made it we're glad that you're here now let's get ourselves centered let's get ourselves honed in and ready to receive the word tonight let's pray together right now father in heaven we say thank you we thank you because no matter what we've gone through today, we may have gone through many dangers, toils, and snares, but you have brought us back to this place to sit at your feet. 
You brought us back to this place to hear your word. You brought us back to this place to be enlivened, to be edified, and to be poured into. So God, right now as we gather, we ask you to bind us together. And as you bind us, open our ears so that we can hear, open our minds so we can understand, but open our hearts so that we can receive. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Listen, as we're gathering, now's a wonderful time to participate in the support of the church. In other words, it's offering time in the house of God. Listen, we thank you in advance for your faithful financial support of the ministries here at Kingdom Fellowship. It's your faithful financial support that allows us to do all the work that God has put in our hands. It's your faithful financial support that allows us to feed the hungry, that allows us to do all the ministry that we do. And we thank you in advance for your future giving. We thank you right now for your current giving. And we certainly thank you for the giving that you have done. Right now on the screen in front of you, all the means of giving are available. All of those are blessed. And we thank you so much for your faithful financial support. Now, let's get into the word for this week. We continue a series of teachings that we've been doing together under the general rubric of Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit. And as you know, we're doing a deep dive into the Holy Spirit. We talked originally about the Holy Spirit being a who, not a what. The Holy Spirit is a person of God. The Holy Spirit is a who with personality, with drive, with feeling, with will. It's a who, not a what. But then we got into the gifts of the Spirit. And the gifts of the Spirit are manifold and, multi and have a multiplicity of applications, a multiplicity of gifts. And we know that we are entitled to gifts, that we're inheriting gifts. Because the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, Jesus tells his disciples before he goes away, it is not for you to know the times or the dates that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? After this, he was taken up before their eyes, and a cloud hid, them, hid him from their sight. Jesus promised gifts. He said that we would receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. And because the Holy Spirit has come upon us, we have power and we have been gifted. But we've been given gifts with a purpose. Remember, our gifts are not for us. Our gifts are for the kingdom of God. Our gifts are to do the work of God. It's not so that we can get the big head. It's not so that we can say, ooh, look at me. It's so that we can better the world for God so that his kingdom can be here on earth. Remember, we all know Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ask or think, but it says according to his power that is at work within us. His power that is at work within us is the power of the Spirit, is the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, giving us our gifts to use for kingdom purposes. And be clear, all of us have a gift, but many of us, but all of us have different gifts. Some of our gifts may overlap, but the truth of the matter is God picked the gifts that you have based on who you are, and he gave you grace for your gift. The Bible tells in Romans chapter 12, verse 6, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. The grace that we are given is the power, the ability to carry the gift that God has given us. That's why there's no reason for us ever to be jealous of somebody else's gifts. There's no reason for us ever to say, I wish I had that gift or I wish I had the other gift. You have been built, created, and graced to carry what God has given you. Grace gives us the ability to use the gift that God has given us for the uplift of others. So never be jealous. Never be covetous of someone else's gifts. Your gifts are the gifts that were tailor-made and designed for you. When God had you in mind, he had gifts of the Spirit in mind for you. And he has graced you to carry them. He has graced you to use them. And he has graced you to use them well. Now listen, this week is part two of what we've been teaching. We've got gifts. Last week, if you haven't seen last week, you want to go on back and check that one out. We started with the first set of gifts. We're, you know, there are a whole lot of gifts in the Bible. The gifts of the Spirit are listed out in the book of Romans, in the book of Corinthians, in the book of Ephesians. But we're focusing on the book of Corinthians. We're focusing on 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. Look at the gifts that Paul lays out. Look at what the Word of God tells us. There are different kinds of gifts, 
but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Listen, remember what Paul tells us here. Paul tells us there are different kinds of gifts, but they all come from the same spirit. And they are working in us, and they are working for the same God so that each of us can build up the kingdom. Now, last week, again, go back and check it out. That's where we started the first set of gifts that we're covering from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we, last week, we talked about wisdom the gift of wisdom. We talked about the gift of knowledge, the gift of faith, and the gift of healings. This week, we're going to pick up on the back half of those gifts. This week, we're starting with the gift that Paul mentions that is simply the working of miracles. Chapter, chapter 12, verse 10 says, to another miraculous powers. And that is simply the working of miracles. Be very clear. We can be gifted to perform miraculous things. We can be gifted to do miracles. Miracles did not end in the Bible. Miracles did not end in the Old Testament or the New Testament. God is still working miracles and God is still working miracles through his people. Listen, the working of miracles is the gift of the Holy Spirit that's depicted throughout the Bible from Moses parting the Red Sea to Jesus feeding the 5,000. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, he's still in the business of working miracles. Similar to the, to the word of knowledge, this spiritual gift is a manifestation by the Holy Spirit, not by human efforts. The work is unexplainable in its nature and it edifies and delivers others. Be very clear. The working of miracles is not a power that any of us have. The working of miracles doesn't make you Superman. It doesn't make anybody Supergirl. It, th those miracles are a manifestation of God working through you, through you. Those miracles are a manifestation of the gift that God has given us and it's working through us. It's working in us to build up others. It's working in us and working through us so that others can see God. In other words, it's not about us. It's about the God that is working in us and through us. A miracle by its definition is an event that defies common expectations. It's an event that defies common behavior and is subsequently attributed to superhuman agency. It's an occurrence that demonstrates God's involvement in the course of human events. Be very very clear. It's not a miracle if it can be explained, and it's not a miracle if it's through your own power. Miracles are the supernatural. It's God endeavoring and reaching in to human affairs. Be very clear. One of the things that I love about miracles, whether you have the gift or not, it means that God is still concerned about us. God is still reaching into our lives. God is still concerned with our affairs. God is still making a way for us. God is still still changing things. God is still acting in ways that go beyond the natural, go beyond the normal so that we can see his power present in our lives. We can see his power moving in our world. The point that the, the fact of the matter is the fact that there are miracles is the fact that there is a God. The fact that we see miracles is proof positive that God is still in charge. God is still on the throne and God is still making a way. God is still working in your life and God is still working in my life, which is why we when we run into the unimaginable, we have to know that God still performs miracles and he's given some of us the gift of being the 
agent of his supernatural work. He's given some of us the gift of being the agent of his supernatural power because God works through us. Be clear, miracles are occurrences above nature and above man. In other words, when we have the gift of miracles, we have to remember to say, it's above me. This is not my power. This is not my might. This is God above me. This is God doing more than I could have ever done. God is using you when you have the gift of miracles as God's divine instrument. And be clear, instruments have no value outside of the hand of the one that's using it. Let me give you an example. If you gave me a scalpel, I couldn't do a whole bunch with it because I don't know what to do with a scalpel. I'm not a surgeon. I'm not one trained for that. But if you give a talented surgeon a scalpel, a talented surgeon can transplant hearts. A talented surgeon can repair veins. A talented surgeon can repair ligaments and joints because the instrument in their hands makes a difference. But the scalpel, that instrument itself, just lying there, a scalpel, that instrument itself, just sitting on a table, does nothing. In the wrong hands, it's not of much value. In no hands, it's not of any value. But in the skilled hands of a surgeon, a scalpel can make all the difference. Be very clear, we can be God's scalpels when we have the gift of healing. We are God's scalpel. We are God's instrument. We are God's way of using his hand to infect and inflict and encounter the world in different ways. So be very clear. Don't ever get jealous of the gift of miracles. Miracles, that's a gift that some people are graced to carry. It may not be your grace to carry a miracle, but it's the same gift that God has given to all of us that he gives in each gift. Each of our gifts are valued. Be clear. Look what the Bible tells us if you want to really know about miracles. John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. This is what Jesus tells his disciples. Truly I tell you, Whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my, ma my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Look at what Jesus starts off by saying here. Everything that you've seen me do, you will do greater. And be clear, we saw Jesus perform miracles. We've, they saw Jesus heal withered hands. They saw Jesus give sight to the blind. They saw Jesus cure leprosy. They saw Jesus raise the dead. Those are absolute miracles. And Jesus' promise is, you will do greater. Be very clear for someone that says there are no more miracles. The promise of God is that you will do greater. And we do greater by the gifts of the Spirit. We do greater by God moving in us, moving through us, and using us. Jesus says from the beginning, you will do greater things, which means that miracles are in our hands when we have the gift of miracles, which means that the power of God is in our hands when we have the gift of miracles. But it's only valuable in our hands because God is using us to be his instruments. Now, after the gift of miracles, look at what the word tells us. The next gift that Paul Dick don't that Paul donate. I'm sorry that Paul delivers to us and Paul and Paul points out for us in this chapter from Corinthians is the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy is the gift of the Holy Spirit in one that Scripture. It. Let me just start over. The gift of prophecy is the direct word of the Lord to be given to someone else to edify and build them up. The gift of prophecy is not simply foretelling the future, but is a word from God. It is a word that some of us are gifted to be able to speak into people and speak into the world so that they hear what God is doing. Prophecy comes from the English, which connotates the word prophet or to prophesy. It's derived from the Greek word, which in pagan Greek means to speak forth or to proclaim or to announce. In biblical Greek, however, these terms carry the connotation of speaking, proclaiming, or announcing something under the influence of divine inspiration. Be very clear what we're saying here. The power of prophecy is the ability to speak forth and proclaim under the influence of God, the word of God. 
which means that if you're got, if you've been given the gift of prophecy it doesn't mean future telling it doesn't mean that you can predict the future it doesn't mean that you can look out and see what the lottery numbers are going to be that's not prophecy prophecy is the spiritual gift of speaking forth to declare divine will to interpret the purposes of God to make known in any way the truth of God which is designed to influence people. Do not ever limit prophecy to foretelling. It is forthtelling. Foretelling is being able to predict the future, being able to say, well, I predict this is what's going to happen and to see it through. The gift of Forthtelling is to be able to set forth and speak forth the word of God as it edifies, warns, and influences the people. It is the speaking forth and declaration of divine will. Be very clear. When people are speaking in the prophetic, they are not just saying, well, this is what's going to happen. They are speaking the truth under the divine inspiration of God to influence people to move in God's way, to influence people to move towards God's things, to influence people to move in the ways of God. Prophecy that is self-dealing, prophecy that is for profit is not the prophecy of God. Prophecy that is just to make people feel better or to get them to run to do something because this will happen if this happens. That is not the forth telling of God. The forth telling of God is under the unction of God speaking and declaring his will and his purpose. Be very clear. The challenge of the gift of prophecy is that sometimes the will of God will not be well received. Sometimes the will of God will not be well handled. Sometimes the will of God is the opposite of what people want to hear. That's why it takes a real grace to carry prophecy. It takes a real grace because you may have to stand in front of angry faces and simply declare, thus saith the Lord. The truth of the matter is, speaking on behalf of God comes with its own burden. So be very clear. That's why I tell you, you can't want a you can't want a gift that you're not graced for. You can't want a gift that you don't have the power to carry. You can't want a gift that God has not groomed you for, made you for, molded you for, shaped you for. Because the truth of the matter is, if you're going to carry the word of God and speak it to people, you've got to do it in season and out of season. You've got to do it when people want to hear it and when people don't want to hear it. Be clear, when God sends Jonah to Nineveh, he's sending Jonah to a place that Jonah thinks will be hostile. But when they hear the word of God, they change. When God tells Jeremiah, I'm going to have you be my mouthpiece, and he has him speaking to his people, they don't want to hear what Jeremiah is saying. Yet Jeremiah speaks anyway, because that is the work of one who carries the gift of prophecy. It's not foretelling, it's forthtelling. It's telling what God has for you to say. Now, be very clear. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21 warns us, For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The real work of prophecy comes from the Spirit speaking through us. It's not for what anyone who is carrying the gift wants to say. It is what the gift, it is what the Spirit is saying through the one who is carrying. It's what the Spirit is saying through the one who has been inspired. As a matter of fact, we know that the Spirit of the Lord comes on us to give prophecy simply because look at what Acts chapter 2 verses 16 through 21 says. This is the word spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of 
the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, the prophet Joel prophesies that this is what's going to happen in the last days. This is confirmed when Peter repeats it in Acts chapter 2. But the word of God is telling us that both men and women can receive the gift of prophecy. Both men and women will be able to speak out on behalf of God. Both men and women will be able to pronounce what God has put in their heart and put on their heart to be able to forth tell to the world, to be able to put the word of God and the works of God into the world. Be very clear. The work of prophecy is for the upbuilding of God's people. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3 says it directly. On the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. In other words, prophecy, when you carry it, is supposed to speak into people and build them up, even if it's something they don't want to hear. The gifts of God are gifts that we are graced for because they will not always be well received, but they are ours to use as God has gifted them to us. The next one that we want to get to from the book from 1 Corinthians is the discerning of spirits. The discerning of spirits is a gift of the Holy Spirit that allows the one who is gifted with it to see evil spirits operating in someone's life. The Holy Spirit pulls back the curtains and exposes the evil spirits so the person can experience a breakthrough from their bondage. In other words, it is the power to know what is of God and what is not of God. It is the power to see behind the pretense, to see behind the curtain, to see behind what's going on into the spirit realm so that you can discern one spirit from the other. The worst thing in the world is to be tricked because you've been listening to the wrong spirit. The worst thing in the world is to be thinking that you're listening to the spirit of God and it's really the spirit of the enemy. That's why Paul says you ha that there's a gift that allows us to distinguish between spirits. Be very clear. There is not just the spirit of God. There's the spirit of the enemy. There's all sorts of spirits around us, but you've got to know which spirit you're dealing with. And many of us have gotten into challenges, have gotten into trouble, have gotten into problems because we thought it was the spirit of God when it was really a different spirit. When we have the gift to discern between spirits, we have the ability to see for ourselves so that we can be a warning to ourselves and a warning to others. We have the ability to be able to look forth and see what's really going on. It is the God-given ability to discern what people are saying, how people are acting, so that, watch this, the Bible says you will know them by their fruits. The problem with knowing them by their fruits is that you find out the answer after. Discernment is the ability to see before. It is the ability to discern, is this of God or is this not of God? Is this of God's will or is this not of God's will? And that gift, watch this, can keep you out of trouble. That gift can keep you out of issues. That gift can keep you out of problems. And it keeps you out of issues. It keeps you out of problems because it lets you see, know, experience, and share the will of God, not just what's going on around you. Look at what 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6 says. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, but because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore from the viewpoint of the world. And the world listens to them. We are from God. And whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of 
falsehood. Be very clear. The gift of discernment allows you to apply this text in real time. It allows you to apply this text so that you're seeing what's of God, seeing what's not of God, seeing what acknowledges Jesus, seeing what doesn't acknowledge Jesus, seeing what lines up with Jesus, seeing what doesn't line up with Jesus. Discernment allows you to have alignment ahead of time, not having to fix it afterwards. The spirit of discernment, the gift of discernment allows us to see what God sees even when we can't see it for ourselves. The supernatural nature of discernment allows you to see it without knowing how you see it, not knowing why you see it, not knowing but simply knowing that you see it and knowing that that sight is from the spirit within you telling you yes and telling you no telling you wrong and telling you right. That gift of discernment will allow you to walk in the will and way of God even when those with good words, those with fruity words, those with words that you want to hear are telling you one thing, you can see and discern that's not of God. Because the challenge when we don't move in discernment is that as long as it sounds good, we'll go with it. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have had something that sounded good, but at the end, it certainly was not for your good? It sounded good, but at the end, it certainly did you no good. Discernment allows you to not have to deal with just listening through your flesh. It allows you to listen through the spirit so that you can know if it really is of God. The last two have to do with tongues. These last two gifts that are, that are enumerated here in Corinthians have to do with the gifts of tongues. Now, this is one of the ones that many of us think of when we think of the gifts of the Spirit, that we think of when we think of the Holy Spirit. And they come together. Uh, the gift of tongues is the gift of speaking in tongues. The gift of the Holy Spirit is the, su- the gift of tongues in the Holy Spirit is the supernatural ability to speak and pray in tongues that you do not naturally know. This can be spoken in prayer directly to God or in assembly where God anoints a believer. The gifts of tongues is wonderful, but it also comes, it also has to be combined with the gift that is parallel to it, the gift of interpretation. Because the challenge with the gift of tongues is that there are those who are gifted to speak in tongues that they do not know. They're gifted to speak in the, in the words of the Spirit. They're gifted to speak in the words of God, but that doesn't mean that they understand it. So you have also the gift of the interpretation of tongues. Those who can hear and understand what the Spirit is saying to interpret the tongue that is being spoken. This gift can be for you to hear. This gift can be for you to explain to the church. The spirit of the discer- the spirit of interpreting tongues is literally that. It's like being an interpreter that stands between and translates from one language to the other, from the heavenly to English, from the heavenly to Spanish, from the heavenly to Greek. It is the gift ability to interpret what the Greek calls glossolalia, the excited ecstatic utterances that may come when someone has the spirit of speaking in tongues, the gift of speaking in tongues, that gift of speaking directly through and from and with the spirit. But then it says there are those who have the gift of interpretation because remember, gifts are to edify the body, which means that if only those who speak and have that gift, then that gift doesn't edify anybody who doesn't know what they're saying. So these gifts work in tandem, the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues. First time we see tongues, it's in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. We, all, we know what it says. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed like tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Be very clear. It starts with the Spirit enabling them to speak in other tongues. But look at what 1 Corinthians 14 says. If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two or three at most who are speaking each in turn 
and let someone interpret. But if there is no interpretation, let each of them keep silent in the church and speak to himself and to God. Look at what Paul is saying. We know that the spirit of tongues exists. We know the gift of tongues exists, starting in Acts 2 and then moving throughout the Holy, the holy Church, the early church. But what Paul says is, while that's going on, number one, we don't want it to cause confusion. So if you have multiple people with the gifts of tongues, they have to speak one at a time. But then he says, there also needs to be someone there who can interpret so that the body can understand what's going on. What I want you to see here is we have the speaker of tongues and the interpretations of tongues. They can be gifts that come together or gifts that come separately, but they both are there to edify and build up the body of Christ. They both are there to edify and build up believers. Tongues are not a spiritual gold star. They are a gift of the Spirit given to some. Interpretation is a gift of the Spirit given to others, but they all come from the same spirit. My point to you is, you've got gifts. We've got gifts. When God gave us the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit lives in us, dwells in us, and empowers us. It's given us gifts. I'm not talking about the fruit of the Spirit. We're going to get into that. We're talking about the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts that God gives us to interpret tongues, to speak in tongues, to be able to discern between spirits, to be able to prophesy, to be able to work miracles, to be able to do, to do different types of healings, the gift of faith, to be able to put what we know into action, the gift of knowledge where God pours into us to know things that we can't know on our own, the gift of wisdom, the ability to apply everything that we know. I want you to understand that no matter what it is, you've got gifts. And gifts, we work through Corinth, we work through Corinthians over the last two weeks, but there are multiple gifts in the Bible. And I want you to know what your gift is. So this is what I want you to do this week. This week, so that you can know exactly what your gift is, I want you to do this. I want you to text the word gifts. Text GIFTS, G-I-F-T-S, to 240-201-3300. That'll give you a link for a spiritual gifts test. That will allow you to discover for yourself what your gifts are. And I want you to know you are gifted, but you got to know what your gifts are. You got to know how God has gifted you, how God has put the spirit in you, and how it indwells in you, and what it's giving you the power to do to help the body. But here's the thing. It's not enough to know your gifts. You got to apply your gifts to help the body. And you can't apply your gifts to help the body if you're not a part of the body. So if you don't have a church home right now, we'd love to have you here at the Kingdom Fellowship Church. We'd love to have you as a part of our family and a part of what we're doing. Listen, you've got to have a place where you can apply the gifts that God has given you. You're gifted and God has given you those gifts to build his church. God has given you those gifts so that his kingdom can be seen here on earth. But you can't do that by yourself and you can't do that alone. So if you want to become a part of the Kingdom Fellowship Church, do me a favor. Text New Start to the number below. You reach out to us, we'll reach right back out to you because we'd love to have you as a part of the Kingdom family. But listen, if you're not saved, if you're not sure, if you're not sure that you're a believer, or if you are a believer now, it's your first time and you're saying, I want to be a part of that, I believe God, but I've got to get saved, I've got to know God for myself. If you don't know God for yourself, Text New Start to the number below. We want to get you saved. We want to get you in right relationship with God and then right relationship with God's church. You're gifted. God has given you gifts. So whether you're in the church or not in the church, God loves you. But when you know God for yourself and then he fills you with the Holy Spirit, your gifts get activated and you can apply them to the building of God's community, to the building of God's kingdom, and to the transformation of the world. So text New Start to the number below, and that way you can be a part of what God's doing. Thank you so much for joining us. So glad to have you here this week. So glad to have you every week. But you know, we end every week with these words. We are kingdom disciples making a kingdom difference. And as kingdom disciples making a kingdom difference, we know that the word of God is not only for us to hear, but for us to apply. We want to not only be hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. This week, I want to challenge you, do this. Text GIFTS to 240-201-3300. G-I-F-T-S 
TS. Text that to 240-201-3300. Fill out that survey. Find out what your gifts are so that you can start applying them and building up the kingdom of God. God bless you. I love you. And we'll see you next time.